back again, another video. We'll be talking about someone wanted me to discuss when narcissists uh, stay with you to keep you from moving on. I just wanted to talk about that and speak on that. So, um, a lot of people have gotten to the point with these narcissistic individuals where you've pretty much figured out who you're dealing with and you want to break free. Um, but you're tied to the narcissist in some sort of way. You know, maybe you're stuck in the lease with them or you got kids with them or you're married, whatever. Or perhaps you're building yourself up and you're trying to execute, execute excuse me, um, an exit plan. And the narcissist can sense it. You know, they almost seem to have like a sixth sense as to what's going on with you and in, 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 in your head and in your emotions. They can pick up on this stuff and people may not think that they're giving off any signals or red or, or, or you know, red flags to the narcissist at least that, you know, you're trying to exit or get up out of there or out of the situation with them. But um, they're pretty keen in on it. And even at this point in time, when you're attempting to use the gray rock method, you know, the narcissist seems to, to be one step ahead of the game. They, they kind of can feel their way and they know what's going on. They know, you know, OK, you're acting different now. You're acting strange. You're acting funny and they can sense this. Your, your body language says a lot too. a lot of you. You know, may try to act a certain way, but even your body language starts to give away cues to, to the narcissist. And many times when a narcissist suddenly becomes nice, it's an attempt to alter the way your emotions feel about them so that you get confused with your decision to leave or abandon the narcissist. Right. So they they go into immediate, you know, they're very perceptive about you know, your emotions and how you act, what you usually do from what you usually don't do, etc. And again, they can pick up on that with pretty, pretty good accuracy. All right. A lot of you, you become distant to the narcissist, you know, while you're with them or, you know, um, you know, you, you start to, you know, give them the cold shoulder or you, you start to, you know, you're not as open and, you know, stuff with them. You, you know, you, you, you're, you're starting to figure them out and they can sense it. And you may become passive aggressive with them, you know, and the narcissist knows all this all too well. You know, they know what this is all about. They've seen it with past sources before, past sources of supply that they've dealt with. And they know exactly what is what this is leading to. You're trying to get up out of there. You're trying to get up out of Dodge and they can feel it. They can sense it. So in an in an attempt, at least to get ahead of whatever you have in store for them, the narcissist may do one or two things. Um, first, they may try to initiate the separation or the breakup before you get to carrying it out yourself. Why? Because it leaves them still in a position of having that control. And in many ways, it can conflict. Well, it can inflict psychological damage on damage on the supply that that left them by or that is trying to leave them and getting tongue twisted. It can it can, inf you know, um, inflict psychological damage on the supply that's trying to leave them. Right. And it will leave that supply clueless as to what's really happening or going on. And why they are leaving them in the first place. So, you know, that's one thing. The second is they may attempt to reactivate the love bombing stage. Which is pretty effective. And it's usually one of their uh, main go-tos in these situations. When they feel like you're about to abandon them. Is they, you know, they put themselves into, you know, you know, this different disposition of being cooperative and all this other stuff to put you into a state of confusion and doubt about your decision to move on from them because you'll think well maybe this 
isn't something that's going to always be always go on. Maybe this is something that they're just going to going through right now. And because a lot of you have invested so much of your time, efforts and emotions into these individuals, you're more likely to try to put off that plan of leaving them or, you know, um, delay it in some sort of way. Because you, you want to stick around to see if this thing does actually change and work out for the better. It's an effective tactic, okay? You know, because they, they already know, the narcissist already knows what exactly what you want to see and hear from them. So they'll do this, you know, and they'll, they'll go into this instant humble mode. To get you to feel a sense of ease and like, OK, we can have peace. And, you know, this is where that doubt comes in, where you may be thinking that everything is fine and that, you know, maybe it was something that you did. And, 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 and you know, you'll get thrown off and sidetracked greatly if you fall for that tactic. They're not going to remain that way. You know, um, you'll be you'll find yourself right back into in the funhouse by falling for that tactic. They're only going to be that way for as long as it takes to get you to, um, you know, deeply engage with them again, you know, to and they, they, they can they can sense this by the amount of effort you start putting back into them. Because, you know, when you're ready to pull out, you may stop doing a lot of things and you may, you know, become complacent with them and they know what's going on so when they reactivate this love bombing stage and they they keep it going for a while it can get you to re-engage and, and and start to apply and put in time effort and so forth back into them and the narcissist will remain cooperative and behave themselves for a period of time to delay that departure as i said it's all a game it's really all a game. And, and the, uh, a lot of the factors that go with this is, you know, um, it's a blow to the narcissist's ego to, to be left, to be abandoned by a source of supply, which they felt was never going to leave them and never going to want uh, to not be with them. That's a major blow to them. A lot of them can't take that. And they do take it personal. I mean, they take that very personal. And so if you've managed to get out of there and move on, it's like, where are you going? And then the other thing, like another thing is that, you know, they don't want to see you happy elsewhere. Because if you're going somewhere else where you can be happy without them, that lessens the chance of them actually getting you back. That actually, you know in many ways seals the deal permanently to where they more than likely won't be able to get you back if you're somewhere else and you're happy. That's why happiness is so key and important to, to one's recovery. Because if you're still bitter or angry or, you know, um, ha harboring any type of um, negative emotions, y you're still vulnerable to the narcissist if you're truly happy and you're good you're you're becoming harder and harder of a target for the narcissist to affect another thing another thing is you leaving is like you getting something better that they can't have okay they can't have that. They can't be a part of that. They can't say that, you know, that they have that, you know, and that's another big thing that they have to be left with. With, And I know many of you get left or discarded by the narcissist, but there are many who discard the narcissist. And when you discard them, it's not something that they live with so easily. It's a, a, a major blow to their their ego it's a major blow to um, their 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 confidence, and you know they they fall off their high horse, you know, and so 
of course, a lot of them will try to stay with you for that reason, even though they don't want you, they want nothing to do with you. They have no interest in building with you and they're looking for your replacement on the side the whole time. But they rather do it while you're still in their grasp so that they don't have to feel that emotion of being um, replaced and left behind while you move on and become happy and satisfied somewhere else. So they're very good at playing that role and staying in a position or a a situation uh, without any care or regard. And they'll play the role like they still do want to be there with you. They still care about you. They still love you. But it's all that's just so that you don't move on before them. They can't take it and they don't like it. And so that's the reason why narcissists will stay with you, even though it's completely over and there's no light uh, energy or anything left. They want to move on. Uh, Well, you want to move on, but they don't want you to move on. That's too much of a victory that you're having over them for them to deal with. So they're not willing to allow that. Anyway, I hope that, you know, resonates with those who need it. Um, Anybody looking for one on one, um, you know, email ASSC direct at Gmail. It's in the description box as well. Till next time, y'all take care of yourselves. Love yourselves. Have a good one.